think what we're going to do today is just talk a little bit about how the markets have been overall, and then we'll move into the portfolio with Mohan and Jim. As we wrote to most of our investors, we had uh, pretty optimistic expectations that the beginning of the year would be quite strong. And we've seen that illustrated across most of the indices. Uh, really, it was a lot of investors thinking that they had finally figured out how to time the market and they really were just pretty late on the trade. We've seen the indices have really healthy gains. It's been off the back of probably better than expected or not as bad as expected earnings announcements and economic readings, especially related to inflation that have started to taper down. We were seeing uh, things such as uh, Meta, which had been badly beaten up in leading into the end of the year, uh, up dramatically along with other um, of these tech names that have started to, to cut um, economic for earnings and are allowing the, themselves to better perform. And we've seen investors really reward that. On the interest rate side, the Fed signaled that they're certainly coming to the end of the, the really aggressive rate hiking cycle that they've um, been going through. And will we expect to see some continued rate hikes through the rest of the year? It seems like we've got the worst of it behind us. And I think really that a lot of investors out there are looking for a massive pivot, but it's probably not going to come because that inflation is probably going to take a little bit longer to come down than, than most people expect. Having said that, having 5% interest rates is not really the worst thing in the world. And it's really just going to direct capital to higher quality pro uh, projects. So over the longer term, um, we're not as concerned as we were at the beginning of the year about inflation. Um, we think the Fed will continue to, to temper investor expectations in the near term. And that will probably mean that the US markets are probably reaching a bit of a peak here. And we wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of a pullback over the next uh, month or two. Europe's also done exceptionally well. They managed to get through what's been a, a pretty difficult situation, especially related to energy. They do have some inflation concerns, and we think they'll probably be more aggressive as they push forward. Um, but, but thankfully, that's probably going to be tempered by the removal of China's zero COVID policy. That really caught the market off guard. Uh, I think more than anything, it, it drove expectations that things were immediately going to get back to normal. They're probably not going to, but eventually they will. But more than anything, it probably puts the supply chains back into effect. And I think we're going to continue to see that inflation tempering. So overall, uh, we're generally pretty positive, but we wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of a pullback come in here now. At this point, I think I'd like to, to hand it over to Mohan and he can talk a little bit of how the portfolio has been doing and then over to Jim to talk a little bit about the, the financial condition of the company. Okay, uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. And thank you very much for, for joining us today. Uh, we very much appreciate your time. Uh, as you know, we, we segment our, our portfolio broadly into two buckets. Uh, one bucket is legacy investments in the cannabis space, um, and the other bucket uh, consists of new investments in diversified sectors, including technology, biotech, etc. And so what I'll do today is I'll run through some select corporate updates and highlights from the portfolio and sort of give you a sense of what's happening at some of the portfolio companies. So, so let's start off with the legacy investment uh, bucket. I'll talk about four companies. I'll talk about Deliver Brands. I'll talk about Weed Me, which is our biggest holding. Uh, I'll talk about Sequoia, and I'll also talk about Southern Cannabis. So let's start with Deliver. So what is Deliver? Deliver is, is one of our longest term holdings, I guess. We've, we've owned it for, uh, for quite a while. Uh, the company successfully transitioned uh, over the last couple of years from being a cannabis cultivator uh, to becoming a consumer products company. Uh, a major development at the company recently was the sale of the Lucky Lake Cannabis Grow Facility to another group uh, for $3 million in cash. Uh, that press release came out a few weeks ago. Uh, Lucky Lake was the last outstanding major asset the company owned that was related to its prior incarnation, I suppose you could call it, as a cannabis cultivator. 
And so now with all those legacy sort of assets gone and legacy issues behind it, uh, we're looking forward to a period of sales growth runway for the company uh, with their consumer products. Uh, they can utilize this new capital uh, towards marketing and distributing, uh, you know, their dream water and, and, and live relief product lines. And actually, some of that's already starting to pay off. Uh, I don't know how many of you check uh, Delivera's press releases, but uh, they recently announced that they've signed a deal with Hilton Hotels uh, to sell dream water uh, to, you know, and, and hold them across 450 Hilton Hotel uh, locations across the U.S., uh, so we like the transition there from being a, a cannabis cultivator to um, to a consumer products company is basically complete at this point. Uh, and so we're pretty happy with that. Uh, the next company I'll talk about is WeedMe. Uh, it's our largest holding. It's, it's a leading uh, cannabis house of brands here in Canada. And it's been you know one of the rare success stories in cannabis, uh, having grown their business multiple fold uh, over the past three years. Uh, while most of the competitors have actually had to scale down dramatically, right? So December and January are historically, you know, weakest months of the year uh, for cannabis as a whole and, 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 you know, for the company as well. But they've still done quite well, actually. Uh, they've still sort of hit record, you know, numbers for those sales numbers for those months. Uh, and so we're quite happy with that. So, you know, seasonally adjusted, the, the revenues continue to ex exceed our expectations, and we're quite pleased with how uh, how that revenue line continues to develop and the, and the profitability line continues to develop. And what the management has sort of indicated to us is that they believe the company will continue to grow uh, revenues materially higher even more uh, in 2023 over 2022. So very, very sort of positive uh, developments there. And given the, the landscape in cannabis globally, and particularly in North America, uh, they have tons of acquisition opportunities, actually. Uh, you know, there are companies that have reasonable amount of sales, but are underperformers in terms of operations. And, and there is an opportunity for the company to pursue that if it chose to. And, uh, you know, it's not just, it's not just customers and investors that, that are sort of recognizing, you know, how, how well Weedney's doing. You know, we wouldn't be surprised if they got an operating line from a major Canadian bank soon, and that would allow them to accelerate their growth even more. So, so we're quite happy overall with the pro, uh, progress that we me uh, and we continue to uh, continue to be happy uh, shareholders. Uh, next, I'll talk about Sequoia Cannabis. Sequoia is a European, you know, extraction company, and they produce some of the highest quality GMP certified extracted products in in Europe. Um, you know, they had very strong sales in January, which is back on a positive track after you know what was a seasonally weaker December. Uh, and management is having ongoing conversations with major uh, international food and drink companies. Uh, these are sort of longer term projects and, and clients that could lead to large deals. And while management's focused on that, the salespeople that they've recently hired are generating uh, the immediate and, and medium term revenues for the company. And now they have a pretty decent cash balance and can hire even more salespeople. And the existing sort of two salespeople that are, are generating orders and Additional salespeople are expected to push revenues towards a new high. So that's the goal we've uh, set for management in 2023. We want them to achieve a step function higher uh, in revenues with the new sales force. And so overall, we're more comfortable with this company than we have been in the past, simply because there's a higher margin of safety with a better cash balance and more sort of sales effort. So we're, we're very positive and looking forward to, uh, to how they perform in 2023. And the last sort of legacy investment I'll talk about is Southern Cannabis. So Southern Cannabis is Australia-based uh, cannabis clinics and, and, and brands company. Uh, they also had record-breaking revenue in EBITDA in December, actually. Uh, and they expect to see double-digit millions in sales next year. So this has been another high growth story in our, uh, in our portfolio. And, you know, they're planning to make the 2023 projections, which are quite, you know, quite aggressive. Uh, they intend to make those happen with, with new brands. So they recently introduced the Isoflora brand. And, you know, they're also, build, they're also planning to build out a larger sales team uh, to, to distribute these products outside of just their own clinics. So we're very excited about what 2023 holds for uh, Southern Cannabis and how it can take advantage of... Uh, of what's a rapidly growing uh, Australian cannabis market. So, so those are the four sort of legacy investments that I wanted to give you an update on. And now let me kind of give you an update on two, uh, 
two sort of investments in, in, in the new uh, diversified sort of sectors, I guess, and both are biotech companies. So first I'm gonna talk about Valo Therapeutics uh, and then I'm gonna talk about Medial Labs. So uh, Valo is basically a European cancer immunotherapy company uh, that's currently going uh, undergoing a phase one tri patient trial. Uh, we invested in these guys about 18 months ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, they've been uh, setting themselves up to, to conduct this phase one trial. It, it was a bit delayed. They were hoping to get it going in the summer of 2022. Uh, so there was a six month delay, but they are there now. And they recently um, received 2.5 million in new funding from investors. And they also got 2.2 uh, million, I believe, in euros uh, from the EU for further development of the cancer drug. So, and particularly the funding from the EU is based on, you know, scientific and financial submissions from the company. So that's a real vote of confidence. So these new investments have cleared a pathway for the company to pursue their phase one study. And they've already begun recruiting patients actually this month uh, to, to, uh, to, to go through the study. And so we expect to see results uh, from the study this fall. And, uh, you know, that, that'll be the next major step function up for the, for the company. Um, so that's Valo. So now let me sort of give you, you know, uh, a bit about our other biotech investments, um, uh, Medial Labs. So what is Medial Labs? It's, it's a California-based testing company. Uh, they provide tests across a variety of indications, including COVID. Uh, the company has been dramatically ramping up sales uh, and the number of tests it conducts uh, per week over the last several months. In February alone, they're they're expecting to do about roughly three times the number of tests they did in, in December. So this sort of dramatic growth is what led Hygrovest to invest in the company's capital raise last year. And using that money, uh, the company is now rolling out UTI and uh, respiratory uh, test panels with their customers. And they've even purchased a new QPCR line to run those tests. So they, that basically prevents them from having to, to delay to, to get additional licensing and they can roll out those tests without having to, to go through the licensing process all over again. And so currently some of the tests are being outsourced to other labs, but they expect all tests to be done in-house by uh, April, May, 2023. And this coincides with a move to a larger facility in April. And so management is focused on getting this move done right without any interruption to business. And once in the new facility, you know, we expect the company to triple the number of tests they do from, from February. So the, the ramp up in terms of the number of tests and revenue that the company is generating is going to be very dramatic. And we expect the company to become cash generating in the very near term uh, as these tests ramp up. So overall, I guess what I'd say in summary is uh, our portfolio of investments continues to be stable, predictable. It's a big turnaround from, from a year or two ago, where especially the legacy investments were were you know, that entire market was a, was in flux. And now these companies have actually responded to the challenge. Uh, they've got their cost structures right. And they're actually succeeding quite well uh, in what's a challenging market and, and, and gaining more market share. And so we're quite proud to be investors uh, in the companies I talked about today. And with that, I'll pass it over to Jim, who's going to lead you through some of our financials. Jim? Uh, thanks, Mohan. Just a couple of points. Uh in addition to what Mike and Mohan have gone through, we re released our January results last week. Uh, basically, they were, they were flat. The, the report, they did highlight the performance of WeedMe. Uh, it continues to be our largest investment, about 50% of the portfolio. The table in the portfolio update shows that uh, they've generated substantial sales and also a profit growth in the last financial year, which was 2022. So that those figures would suggest that uh, the valuations that we're carrying in these investment at are, are, are reasonable. The audited results will be out before the end of February. Uh, Hygrovest remains well funded. We've got about $5 million in, in cash, uh, which is available for further investment and operating costs. Uh, one last point is that we're obviously uh, awaiting uh, a liquidity event for Weedme. Uh, the 
thing that's holding that back in part is that the Canadian listed market uh, remains flat uh, and therefore uh, we're depending upon the recovery and the demand for equity uh, investment in the cannabis space. Uh, I'll uh, leave it at that.